Welcome to July Set News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring on a bite-sized piece. So today, just the thumbnail suggests, it looks like there's some actual positivity out of Ukraine. So we're going to take a look at uh, what is going on at the border and if this means a positive a, a price, price correlation with crypto. We're also going to take a look at uh, what I call a crypto acceleration. It seems like things are just accelerating at a rapid pace. When there's when things happen, they come in bunches. So we're going to take a look at uh, what Coinbase is doing, also the New York Stock Exchange. And then finally, we're going to talk about some exit thinking because it's never too late to think about those exit strategies. So first, let's just take a look at the big story. This just came across the desk and I thought it was pretty uh, fascinating considering that we've had nothing but warmongering and rattle shaking for quite the longest time. This just came out and it talks about Ukraine. Russia says it is withdrawing some troops from the Ukrainian border. Here's what we got. Russia's defense minister confirmed on Tuesday that some of the troops stationed on the country's border with Ukraine are returning to their bases after completing quote unquote drills. Interfax News Agency reports. Before I even read the next sentence, I just got to make myself very clear. If you're going to invade somebody and you have them positioned on one side of the border and you think that you may or may not go in, even if you're just trying to fool somebody, it would be kind of a little bit um, interesting play to say, you know what, we're just going to pull them back, but uh, we're going to stick around. Now, Putin is a master, as we know, uh, for uh, international conflicts and things like that. But it doesn't make any sense to me that on one side they just say, yeah, we're going to uh, pull back people, but then on the other side, we're going to keep it going because this is what uh, we're talking about. So in the next part, Joe Biden's deputy principal press secretary said Russia has not moved to de-escalate its presence on Ukraine's border, where some 100,000 troops are massed. Meanwhile, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz arrived on Moscow on Tuesday for talks with Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin. And right now it is Tuesday, February 15th. So I know what the uh, the press secretary said, but to me it doesn't make much sense as to if you're going to invade somebody, why pull everybody back? And again, this could be the ultimate 3D chess. So the question then is, well, what's going on with the prices? Well, prices today are looking pretty good. Actually, we're up 5% to almost uh, 2.67 trillion. Trading volume is looking pretty good. And then uh, if we take a look at the price of Bitcoin, hey, we're at 44,000. Uh, in 24 hours, that's 3.4%. Ethereum's up 5.9%. Uh, now the hour leaves a little bit uh, off, 0 0.3, whatnot. But again, I think that uh, this could be some positive price correlation also because this news has been uh, gathering steam around over the last uh, couple hours or so. We take a look at traditional markets. S&P 500 had a pretty darn good day. Let me refresh this just to make sure. 44, wow, okay, we did even better. Then also for NASDAQ, let me refresh this just to make sure for the close, looking pretty good. So I think what's going on uh, is positive. I'm glad to see that uh, there wasn't a full-scale invasion, but again, only time will tell. But if it is, this is good news. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's move on to our next piece. It's just crypto acceleration. It just seems like as things are coming about, just kind of, it feels, not that there's any hard data. Well, there is some, some hard data out there. Total value lockup, DeFi, uh, the different volume that's actually increasing, uh, people moving Ethereum and Bitcoin off exchanges, whatever. It just seems like there's a lot of, of good things happening in the crypto space. And it feels like things might actually do pretty well. And this is uh, one of those examples. This was an ex uh, a uh, story that came across the desk Coinbase to hire 2,000 employees because it sees enormous Web3 opportunities. Before I go on, just rem remind everybody that because of that ad for Super Bowl Sunday, uh, within a very short amount of time, under 30 minutes, uh, Coinbase had 20 million hits on their website just for that goofy ad where they had the QR code running about. So it just seems that people are in the right place at the right time, which is you watch this video. Okay, here's what we got. We believe, this is a quote uh, from LJ Brock, Coinbase's chief people officer. I guess that would be uh, uh, what we call human resources back in the day. He says, uh, we believe our industry is in its infancy and that building on ramps for individuals to participate is critical to drive the next generation use case of crypto. We're also expanding to include products that host user-generated content like NFTs. Good, not a second. And we're excited about our ambitious plans for the future of Coinbase wallet, enhancing security, ease of use, and accessibility. Hey, I just hope that you guys keep things going up and it doesn't crash all the time. That would be a big win for me. 
And then also just, you know, uh, for the stock, because they are a publicly listed company now, Coinbase is up 6.1%, uh, almost $207 on Tuesday. So this is just something to be aware of. And just so you know that uh, if you're looking at Web3 about, you know, what does that all mean and whatnot, uh, Web1 was really decentralized because everything was just kind of uh, built in people's own nodes. Web2 was essentially uh, centralized and had everything that was kind of pushed to big conglomerates and big corporations such as Google, Facebook, and uh, all the different places. So now with Web3, we're trying to build it back and make it decentralized. And if you're looking to see what, what kind of play, the play, in my opinion, is I don't know how big each ecosystem is, but they're going to need to build that on some kind of layer one. And that could be Ethereum. That could be Solana. That could be Cardano. That could be Near Protocol. That could be Phantom. That could be Avalanche. That could be Tezos. Just look at those layer one solutions. I think in three, four, five years time, things will work out pretty well. That's not investment uh, advice, just investment opinion. But if I was looking at things, the people that got rich in the gold rush weren't the speculators. It was the people that sold them all those shovels and whatnot. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And let's move on to our second to last piece. Another crypto accelerant, the New York Stock Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange just filed for a trademark app for an NFT marketplace. No, you're not. You're reading that right. Here's what is going on. So the New York Stock Exchange filed for a trademark. Focused on virtual goods and NFTs last week, according to recent trademark application. The trademark app filing date on February 10th is notable as one component refers to an online marketplace for NFTs and virtual goods. Here's the full section in full. I'm not even going to read this. But you will see some comparisons to this and the trademark application from Walmart. And really what it is, is they're trying to hold intellectual property as they move down that road. Is this mean that they're going to have a marketplace, the New York Stock Exchange? Probably not. What they're trying to do is like, look, we're going to try to cover ourselves in case we want to get into that sector in any way, shape, or form. So we're going to file the patent right now. What does that mean? It means that everything isn't going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a couple months. But in the long term, I think the future is extremely bright for crypto and digital assets. Just look around and see what you got. And that is, which would lead me to my next point, which is exit thinking. Now, I don't know where things are going. I can't tell you, I can't give you a price prediction. I mean, I can, but it would be awful. I just know that in time, if you look historically how things have been going, doing pretty good. So the thing we have to think about now is even though the market is moving sideways, it's time to think about what you want to do with all these crypto gains and digital assets and things that you have as far as like exit strategies and things like that. So when I think about that, I think about this is my exit strategy. And I've talked about this at length. Uh, I've got, I mean, I trust is my IRA. I'm putting 5% in cash, 25% in stable coins, 5% in masterworks, 15% uh, and you can't see it too well, that's land. Let me move this a little bit. Uh, 20% in houses, 10% of my Amazon business, and another 15% in staking and just leaving everything in crypto because I think it's going to go up exponentially. And the one I really want to focus on right now is the, the Masterworks. Masterworks, if you don't know, it's purchasing fractionalized shares of super expensive art like Banksy's and Basquiat's and things like that and Vin Vincent Van Gogh and all that stuff, things that I have no business doing uh, but i did a deep dive and purchasing fractionalized shares is a great way to hedge your bet because guess what the super rich will always buy crazy pieces of artwork i'm not big into it but i don't care it's not my job as an investor so i talked about this company masterworks uh, i also uh, went through it and i personally own a banksy and a basquiat again i knew about a banksy that was about it and i don't own the whole banksy that's just that's what I'm telling you. It's a fractionalized share. And these are securities that are registered with the SEC. So you don't have to worry about is this security or anyone else security. It is a security. But what's great about it, and I think is really good, is that there is a 13, 14% price appreciation year over year. And I like to see those things, especially with off-risk assets. Now, I'm not telling you to do a ton of it and get into it, but just like I talked about, uh, I've got 
And I think it's just good to de-risk yourself for a little bit and diversify a little bit. And to that end, I mean, I'm going to, I'll point you to my deep dive. I uh, have that link in the description. I'll actually be at the very end as well. But I brought in this guy, Scott Lynn is the CEO. And I'm going to have him talk to you real quick, about five minutes or so, about what's new, what's going on, and how things are progressing as far as Masterworks. So just take a listen. So everybody, as promised, I brought in one of the founders of Masterworks, Scott Lynn. And uh, Scott, if you take a look at the actual deep dive video, we go through his history, everything that has to do with Masterworks. I'll link that in the description. So I brought Scott in just to tell us, give it an update about what's going on. Scott, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm glad you're here. I mean, I've been talking about you guys forever. This is great. So the first thing I want to get into is just uh, what's new? Because we talked about the different offerings, all those things, but what are you guys doing in this space that it's a little bit uh, different as far as like what we've already talked about beforehand? Yeah, I mean, you know, this year when I think about when I think about the business, a lot of it is just um, all about scale, right? So we're launching a new painting uh, roughly every four to five days on the platform. We're projecting that this year we'll buy somewhere around a billion dollars in art. Um, sure. You know, we're hiring twenty to thirty new people a month. So, uh, so that's really what, what we're focused on is how do we take the, uh, the model that's been working over the past couple of years and just, just scale it to, um, uh, to, to greater levels. Um, so that's, that's mainly what, what we're focused on. Yeah, I gotcha. And you know, what's, it's a, it's a thing because when you talk about scaling, I think that's one of the hardest parts for a business. Cause I know you guys, how many years has it been now that you guys have been in business? Yeah. The business now is, uh, is four and a half years old. Um, so it feels yeah. <laughs> yeah. feel much longer, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's still a relatively, relatively new business. Yeah. You guys, you guys at home will notice that, uh, I'm in a nice casual shirt and Scott over there is, uh, looks a little chilly <laughs> because we're just talking about, uh, the different, uh, cold weather differences. So anyhow, so Scott, <clears throat> that's great. I'm glad you guys are able to scale. It's amazing that in that short amount of time, you're buying a billion dollars worth of artwork. So I'm glad you can get that. Let's talk about real quick as I see it. When I take a look at this, and we already talked about this with uh, the crypto investors, but it seems like for us, there's a lot of risk out there. So we like to, some of us, not everybody, likes to offload some risk. But the way that you see it, are traditional investors finding this just as attractive as the crypto investors? Because I see a lot of people just like holding on to stocks forever. Yeah, I mean, we, we get a lot of uh, qualitative kind of anecdotal feedback on this. So uh, one of the the things that, that we, we try to talk to investors a lot about, which I think is similar to your messaging, is how do you build a portfolio of non-correlated asset classes? And right. when we talk about correlation, we're really talking about do, do things, do, do, do different investment types behave similarly um, in terms of price increases or, or decreases? So uh, I think as a lot of your, your listeners probably know, Bitcoin is is fairly uh, highly correlated to to public equities or the S and P specifically. Yes. Um, one of the one of the interesting things about art is that that the correlation factor between art and the S and P is somewhere around 0 0.1, 0.2, um, depending on the the time period that that you measure. So it right. really is a non correlated asset class. Um, we, we often get asked why that is. I think mm -hmm. I think today we probably think of of two different explanations for that. One is our prices are correlated to the the um, the wealth increase in the top one percent on a global basis. The second <clears throat> is that um, you know we 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 tend to believe that art is a global asset class. You can buy a painting in New York and you can sell it in Hong Kong, so it almost behaves as <clears throat> just an international currency on its own. Since, yeah. since these these paintings aren't really denominated in any any particular currency. Um, and our buyers really live live around the world. The U.S. I think now is twenty five percent of the art market. China is twenty five percent. Western Europe is twenty five percent, and rest of the world is sort of the the remainder. So it is this really interesting global global asset class. So I think that's that's a long winded way of saying that that finding ways to invest that are are non correlated to other things in your portfolio is really important, particularly when when we're living through the the volatility that that we are today. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I see it like we do a daily show. And when we're taking a look at the crypto market, I mean, it's it's wildly volatile. 
And then we take a look at the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And some days, even those markets are more volatile than, than crypto and digital assets. So when I sit back and I think to myself, where is there somewhere it's a little bit safe? And, I, and this is, I didn't put, like for me, I first of all, thanks, I got a nice Banksy, which always sounds good when I say I own a Banksy. <laughs> But it, it's it, it's great when I can just see that, OK, that's <clears throat> going to appreciate because of the fact that the ultra wealthy people who are buying multi-million dollar pieces of artwork do not care so much about the overall global macro uh, environment that's going on. They want those art pieces. They will get those art pieces. And just after over you know COVID, we've seen uh, a lot. Uh, the, the top 10 people, the richest people in the world have actually uh, in one point doubled their wealth. So. I think there's this is a long time coming and this will actually speak to the last part here which my question was this in the beginning we talked about the apy or the, or the interest or the the appreciation for these pieces that usually beats the s p 500 around 14.4 percent or 14.3 now there was two pieces the mona lisa and staring into space that uh, i think the mona lisa was sold in 2019 staring into space was 2021 what was the uh, price appreciation for those those pieces? Yeah, the, the annualized return on those two sales was in excess of thirty percent net of fees. Um, so those were those were very good deals for investors. I think if you look at the um, if you look at the unrealized and realized performance of the portfolio overall across, um, I can't I can't recall specifically, but I think roughly hundred investment vehicles that we've done, uh, mm -hmm. that has averaged about fifteen and a half percent. Uh, net of fees on an annualized basis as of 1231. So mm -hmm. we, you know, we feel very good about the portfolio and the performance of the asset class so far. Gotcha. Okay. So that, that was the, that was the main thing. So just as a reminder for everybody else out there, I know in the crypto space, we're really worried about uh, the SEC coming down and saying, this is a security. This is not a security. The great thing with Masterworks is they registered everything as a security. So you don't have to worry and jump to those hooplas and whatnot. So, Scott, any uh, last words of wisdom for the investors out there, especially in our space, about uh, what you got? Yeah, you know, I, I think what you said, which is, is diversification matters. And, you know, we think about that a lot and we hear about that all the time. But, but qualitatively, <clears throat> it does seem that a lot of crypto investors who, who are signing up for Masterworks do have relatively undiversified portfolios compared to what we would typically expect for, for similar net worths. Um, so I mm -hmm. think, you know, exploring other alternative asset classes, whether it's art or, or other things um, to, to be able to weather different market conditions over time makes, makes sense for all investors. Yeah, it makes sense. And, I, and just lastly, I'll say that when I, when I uh, went through the process, they actually sat, not physically, but Matt sat down with me over the phone call and said, what do you want to do? What are you going on? I'm like, I don't want to put everything in there. It's like, oh, okay, well, you're different than the last guy and the last guy before that. So let me formulate a plan for you and we'll make it work for you. That was, I think, the biggest aha moment for me. So thanks for putting together this uh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we, we walk every every investor through suitability. We talk about how they're investing, what their risk tolerances are, what their goals are. And we, we try to make sure that we make recommendations based on that. Awesome. All right, everybody. So I want to make this quick. Scott's a busy guy, but uh, there is a link in the description. Uh, it looks just like this. And then from there, uh, you, you can pick, your up, uh, pick yourself up and uh, take a look at the different art pieces that are there and also skip the wait list. So Scott, thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, so that's it. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. So look, that's it for tonight and what's going on. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Always consider subscribing. I'll talk about our time sensitive. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.